OK, so we're going to solve this equation. And to get started, the insight that really unlocks this problem is to realise that 9, 25 and 15 are all just made up of 3s and 5s. So this allows us to rewrite all of this expression on the left-hand side. Let's start with 9, which we know is 3 squared. So we've really got 3 squared to the power of x. And I'll actually write this as 3 to the power of x all squared. This is equivalent to 9 to the x. And similarly, we can do the same thing. 25 is 5 squared. So this is really 5 squared to the power of x, or 5 to the x all squared. And we can do the same sort of thing in the denominator. 15 is 3 times 5. So we've got 3 to the x minus 1 times 5 to the x minus 1 in the denominator. And this is all just equal to 16. So now you can see in the denominator we've got powers of x minus 1, whereas in the numerator we've got powers of x. And we can actually deal with this just by replacing 3 to the x in the numerator by 3 to the x minus 1 all squared. And here we've taken out two powers of 3, so we just need to multiply this by 3 squared or multiply this by 9 to cancel this out. So 9 times 3 to the x minus 1 all squared is equivalent to our 3 to the x all squared. And similarly we can take out two powers of 5, so we've got 25 times 5 to the x minus 1 all squared. And then we leave the denominator alone, we see we've got lots of very similar looking terms, 3 to the x minus 1, 5 to the x minus 1, and this is still equal to 16. So now let's multiply through by this denominator here, 3 to the x minus 1, 5 to the x minus 1, to get rid of the fraction. So on the left hand side we've got 9 times 3 to the x minus 1, all squared, minus 25 times 5 to the x minus 1, all squared, and this is now equal to 16 times 3 to the x minus 1, times 5 to the x minus 1. And here we're seeing some structure that it looks almost like a quadratic expression. We've got two variables at the moment. We've got 3 to the x minus 1 and 5 to the x minus 1. But what if we were to actually divide through by 5 to the x minus 1 all squared? So this could allow us to then have 3 to the x minus 1 divided by 5 to the x minus 1 and perhaps get a single variable. So if we're going to divide through by 5 to the x minus 1 all squared. This is going to give us, first of all, we've got on the left hand side 9 times 3 to the x minus 1. I'll write this as 3 to the x minus 1 over 5 to the x minus 1 all squared, just by dividing through by 5 to the x minus 1 squared. And here this term just turns into 25. And then on the right hand side we're dividing by 5 to the x minus 1 twice. So we've still got 16 times 3 to the x minus 1, but because we've divided through by 5 to the x minus 1 squared, we've now got a 5 to the x minus 1 term in a denominator here. And you can see we're actually starting to get something which looks like a quadratic in this new variable. But a slightly nicer way of expressing this, because 3 to the x minus 1 over 5 to the x minus 1, let's combine this into a single fraction. So this is 9 times, it's going to be 3 fifths, to the power of x minus 1 all squared minus 25 is equal to 16 times 3 fifths to the power of x minus 1. So then if we treat this 3 fifths to the x minus 1 as our new variable, we've now got a quadratic which we can try and solve to find values of x. So let's call 3 fifths to the x minus 1 u. So we're introducing a new variable u which is defined as 3 fifths to the power of x minus 1. And this transforms our previous equation into 9u squared minus 25 equals 16 times u. And then taking the 16u onto the left hand side we get 9u squared minus 16u minus 25 is equal to 0. So at this point there is actually a nice integer factorization we can use to solve this equation. So this relies on spotting that 25 is 9 plus 16. So if we go for a factorization of the form 9u and where we've got a u here equal to 0, we can try two numbers which multiply to give negative 25. We could put in negative 25 here, so minus 25u. And if we put a positive 1 here plus 1 times 9u, so minus 25u plus 9u, gets us our minus 16u, and the negative 25 times positive 1 gives us our negative 25 term there. Or you could just solve this using the quadratic formula if you prefer. 
but now we can just read off what the values of u are for our solutions of this equation. So first of all we get u has got to be 25 over 9 in order for this to be 0, or u has got to be negative 1 for this term to be equal to 0. So with u is 25 over 9, remember that u was 3 fifths to the x minus 1, this becomes 3 fifths to the power of x minus 1 is, and at this point actually 25 over 9 is a nice power of 3 fifths, this is 3 fifths to the power of negative 2. So we take 3 fifths, so take the reciprocal and square, we would get 25 over 9. So this gives us a solution then x minus 1 equals negative 2, so this tells us then one of our solutions to the equation is x equals negative 1. So now if we turn our attention to this other case where we've got u is negative 1, this is telling us then that 3 fifths to the power of x minus 1 is equal to negative 1. So here, if you have a positive number, 3 fifths, raised to a real power, there's no way you can get a negative answer. There's no way we could get negative 1. So there aren't any more real solutions here. But for a bit of fun now, we'll actually explore, see if there are any complex solutions to this remaining part of our original equation. And since we're working with a number raised to a power, we've got this 3 fifths to the x minus 1, we'll try using the exponential form of complex numbers. So first of all, we'll rewrite this 3 fifths to the power of x minus 1 in terms of e. So 3 fifths, we can write this as e to the power of ln 3 fifths, because e and ln are inverses, this cancels out. Then this is all raised to the power of x minus 1. So we can just multiply the exponent by x minus 1 like that, and we know that this is equal to negative 1. So what about putting negative 1 in modulus argument form? So we want to write negative 1 is r times e to the i theta now, where r is the modulus, theta is the argument. So you can just read off the modulus here is going to be 1, so we have r equals 1, which is nice, and you can see that theta is pi is going to be one of our solutions, because this is just the famous identity e to the i pi is equal to negative 1. But this isn't the only solution. We've got negative 1 is e to the i pi, but this is also equal to e to the i times 3 pi, or you could have e to the negative i times pi, or you could even have e to the negative i times 3 pi. There's actually infinitely many different solutions to this sort of equation. So if we find a nice way of expressing this theta, then we can find all the potential solutions to our original equation. So we've got theta is effectively pi or 3 pi or minus pi minus 3 pi, and we can capture this by saying that theta is pi plus some multiple of 2 times pi, where here k could actually be a positive or a negative integer, or it could be 0. So the implications for this then, for our original equation, they're telling us that we've got e to the ln 3 fifths times x minus 1, let's write it here, e to the ln 3 fifths times x minus 1 is now going to be equal to, it's equal to negative 1, and this is equal to just 1 times e to the i theta, where theta is equal to this pi plus some even multiple of pi, where here again our k is any positive or negative integer. And now we're ready to read off our solutions to the equation. So if we compare powers on each side here, we've got on the left hand side ln 3 fifths times x minus 1 is equal to i times theta. So we can write this, because we know what i times theta is going to be, so on the left hand side still ln 3 fifths times x minus 1, and this is going to be pi plus 2k pi times i. So we'll factor this, we'll write this instead of pi plus 2k times pi, we'll write it as 2k plus 1 times pi, then we also need to just multiply by i there. So then we can divide through by ln 3 fifths and add 1 to make x the subject. So we've got x is going to be 1 plus, then we've got 2k plus 1 times pi times i, all divided by ln 3 fifths. So these are all of our complex solutions then, where k is allowed to be any integer. These are our complex solutions to the original equation. And don't forget there was also the real solution where x was equal to negative 1.